<laughs> okay. Um, good morning, faculty, honor staff, graduating students, parents, siblings, grandparents, miscellaneous relatives, and dudes that just got off the elevator on the wrong floor and decided to sit around for three days. Um, I am honored to have been selected as a keynote, keynote with student speaker representing a program I believe in at a university that I love. Um, conveniently, actually, NPR recently compiled the best 300 commencement speeches of all time. Um, and after being asked to give this speech, I initially vomited from panic. Um, and then I spent a considerable amount of time reading through these speeches, um, looking for guidance. Um, because, as you see, I, I study engineering, and my kind is not necessarily known for um, giving speeches or performing sentences at all. Um, so what I found in these speech structures was an initial introduction that acknowledges all possible audience members, which you may recall I've already covered, so we'll get there, um, followed by a short biography of the speaker, giving a resume as a list of personal accomplishments and associations so as to establish a sense of legitimacy with the audience. Um, I actually meant to do the opposite here. If you look at me, you might notice I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm 22. Um, so before we get started, I just want to establish an uh, understanding that you should all immediately ignore what I say and just talk to your loved ones for advice after this is done. Um, okay, all right. Um, And I, I, this is an inherently exciting time. Uh, graduating from a prestigious university such as this is a major accomplishment, one that you should all feel very proud of, um, deeply proud of. But I imagine that a small part of everyone in this room is absolutely terrified. And I actually want to talk about that because I don't think anyone talks about it. Um, because when people post their graduation photos on Facebook, all you'll see is hashtag best four years or hashtag never forget my girls. But I don't know. Uh, but where are all the hashtag oh my god, what do I do now? Uh, and I think it's difficult for our generation to be happy um, when comparing ourselves to others has been made so easy. Uh, social media really is a virtual game of keeping up with the Joneses, and now there are thousands of Joneses. And you're seeing the best version of every single one. It's the version that they're comfortable with the rest of the world seeing. And there's photo filters to hide any imperfections. And no one's going to post a status about how their job is not what they thought it was going to be. Or even the success stories. Um, the status is about getting into medical schools, law schools, business schools, still fail to mention the coinciding fear. And I want to talk about that. Um, I'm not staying away from the congratulations and hugs and balloons, because those are sincerely earned. Um, I'd like to talk about it because I think there's a peace in collective experience in knowing that you're not alone in these fears and that you are not unique in this uncertainty. Um, plus, if I learned anything from Star Wars, and I learned a lot, um, <laughs> is that if we don't deal with the fear right now, it's going to fester, we're going to slowly betray the ones we love, and we're going to the dark side and ultimately have our own son's handoff, moments of the shattering his understanding of his parental lineage, and I think we're better than that, so I think we're just <laughs> So I would like you to now look at your mentors, um, your guardians, your grandparents, and especially your parents in the room. We've done this a few times, but I'd like to do it again. Um, these are your role model models, people you love and respect. To you, they have their lives figured out. Yes, these human beings are who they are now due to decades of experiences, joys, heartbreaks, successes, failures, career changes, and constant uncertainty. They are amalgamations of all these events along the way. They did not simply arrive at their current adult state. Certainly, this holds true for us as well. Adulthood is a process, not an event. We do not have to have everything figured out the morning after graduation. In fact, if you wake up on Sunday feeling that you do have it figured out, I urge you to reconsider. And I urge you to reconsider this for the rest of your life. Because you are all constantly changing individuals who are growing even if your body stopped doing so. You are curious and multifaceted. You have proven this by participating in a program that emphasizes well-roundedness while the world instead begs you to specialize. Think about what this program allows you to do. You took classes in fields you had no business taking classes in. For me, it allowed me to spill my heart out through poetry and writing in the welcoming walls of Francis McHugh's class just moments after using Bernoulli's equation in the fluid mechanics class. It allowed me to learn about contemporary politics in the Middle East from the fascinating and charismatic Ramadana just before a class on 3D printing. 
It was a program that allowed me, in between math classes of 200 students, to sit among 30 peers as we, as we had our brain blown apart by John Heron. <laughs> Um, you have embraced an approach that utilizes all of who you are rather than taking just one small part of you. It's an approach in which you expose yourself to new ways of thinking, new stories, new people, and new passions. You did not simply pick a major and close yourself off to the rest of the world. This strategy has and will continue to serve you well. So please, don't feel like you have it all figured out yet. That would be disrespectful to your own curiosity, to your own personal growth. Plus, we have all felt this uncertainty before. Recall the moment you arrived at this university. Perhaps your parents were dropping you off at Land Raid, or Haggett, or Party, or at the Green System. You were bright eyed, but also terrified. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, you were excited, but you also had doubts, like whether it was actually possible for three people to coexist just in just square feet. You were answering an unknown, um, which is normal. And for me, this moment was in Red Square in front of Susan Little Library beside the, uh, the broken novelist sculpture. And my parents were there to see me off. Um, I could not wait to be in college. I had wanted to live in the city for most of my teenage years, and here I was in the city I loved. On the verge of what I had been told would be the best four years of my life. Yet I was scared, too. I had lived in the same town for almost 15 years, and I knew its streets and its people, and they knew me. I went to a high school where I had a good reputation, where I knew the teachers and the students, where I had an identity. And entering this campus was the death of that identity. In a sea of 40,000, I and everyone else was anonymous. So there we were in Red Square about to say our farewells. And as she so often does, my mother was crying. Um, she was wearing sunglasses to hide it, but she wasn't pulling anyone because we weren't in California anymore. Um, and she hugged me. Um, and without letting go, she said, uh, I'm just going to hug you because I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to say goodbye. I've been preparing for this moment since the day you were born. But here we are, and I still can't do it. And then she let go, and she walked away without turning around. And as I walked back to McMahon through the quad, I wrote to her, it doesn't feel like it right now, but you're still my mother, and you're going to be my mother for the rest of my life. And I saw my own fears and uncertainty reflected in my mother, and she was the strongest woman I had ever known. Um, this was a transitional moment for both of us, one that one of the many that human beings will go through uh, in their life. And now, once again, when I look around the room, I see this moment reflected back to me. Um, we, too, have been preparing for this moment since the day we were born. Yet here we are, and many of us are having serious doubts about whether we know how to do this. In a sense, this feels like the end of a role we've been playing our whole lives. And while these fears are understandable and common, and I get that, they are simultaneously nothing short of foolish. Because when you wake up on Sunday, you are still you, and you are going to be you for the rest of your life. And thank God for that, because look at what you have done so far. You made it this far by trusting yourself, making good decisions, and taking on the unknown. Maybe you had a plan, or maybe you made the best decision at each point along the way. Either way, it worked. So what makes you think it's not going to work in the future? So I'm nearing the end, and uh, based on my research, this is the point at which graduation speeches offer profound advice, wrapped in vague enough language to be applicable to a diverse audience. <laughs> now, I'm going to talk out of that obligation and uh, just steal someone else's words. Um, Ira Glass, um, creator and radio host of This American Life, during his own commencement speech to Goucher College in 2012, recalled his own mentality on his graduation saying, I wish that someone had said to me that it's normal to feel lost for a little while. And so yes, graduates, I think it's okay to be lost for a little while. You have been here before and you managed to find your way back. So continue to be you, but more importantly, continue to be all of you, because it's worked so far. Thank you for listening. Uh, there's a lot of talent in this room. Don't mess it up. Um, <laughs> I'd like to welcome um, Emily. She's a close friend of mine. One of the better human beings, not the best, but one of the better. <laughs> you like her? Um, really excited to do this with her. So thank you.